there been nine dehydration of cyclohexanol? In this lab, we will be um, using 10 grams of cyclohexanol and reacting with a 85% phosphoric acid solution um, using a simple dis or, I'm sorry, fractional distillation. We will we'll be boiling below 100 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes to get our product of cyclohexene. Some key points of this experiment are um, the process itself is a dehydration of an alcohol. It is acid catalyzed with that phosphoric acid solution and it depends on the carbocation which is formed which um, during the beginning of the experiment it's unstable but for the elimination of a proton um, carbocation stability is increased. Um, and we do create an alkene product and then just the last uh, key point here is it is using a acid, the phosphoric acid, so it's important that you avoid uh, skin contact with the phosphoric acid. So the mechanism itself, we have our cyclohexanol, and through protonation, we form a water molecule, which we then dehydrate this um, molecule, um, removing the water, and we have our carbocation. Um, the proton is then eliminated, and we form our cyclohexane. Um, so after completion of this lab, there are several different analyses, analyses we can do. Um, we specifically are going to be doing percent yield and also the bromine test. Um, scientists could also run GC, IR, or NMR to um, not only determine the uh, identity of the product, but the purity. Um, and then just a few more uh, keynotes. Uh, the temperature of the reaction should never exceed 100 degrees Celsius. Um, after you heat the uh, reaction during fractional distillation, you'll need to cool it for about 10 to 15 minutes at room temperature. And then during simple distillation, you only collect the final product, which will be the cyclohexene, from 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. This experiment will utilize three main techniques. The first technique and the first step in our um, lab is a fractional distillation. Um, so the main pieces of the fractional distillation apparatus are we have our heater, our round bottom flask containing the uh, cyclohexanol, um, the fractional distillation column, which is not packed this time, the distilling head and the thermometer, which we have the immersion line placed at the opening of the condenser as usual, um, then we have the condenser with water coming in, cool from the bottom, and out hot at the top. We have our adapter piece, and then our receiver, which we will have placed into an ice bath to help um, kind of deal with some of the smell of the cyclohexanol. Um, the second step in this experiment is two-phase separation. You've used a separatory funnel before. Um, it's the same thing. We're creating an organic phase and an aqueous phase which we will separate into a receiver. Um, the organic phase that we collect from this step will be used in the third step, uh, simple distillation. So we will only want the product that distills out from 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. This will be our cyclohexene. Um, but the simple distillation apparatus is a lot like the fractional distillation apparatus, except we do not have the big fractional distillation column. We have a distilling head, a thermometer placed aligned with the condenser, we have our heater, our mixture in the round bottom flask, um, the condenser with the water in at the bottom, hot water out at the top, the adapter, and then the receiver. And this product that you will receive after the third step will be cyclohexene, cyclohexene not cyclohexanol. Great. So um, before we start this lab, which is dehydration of cyclohexanol, uh, we need all our protective equipments, gloves, goggles, nowadays mask and toe cover shoes and lab coat. So here is our uh, bin. These here you can see there are many uh, glasswares. This is the Hempel column for fractional distillation. This is the condenser, separatory funnel and uh, round bottom flask. So these, this bin have all the three different type of techniques glasswares which is the fractional distillation 
and then two phase separation and then for simple distillation so now uh, next step is to take the cyclohexanol in this round one flask so we will show you how to measure this first we're now ready to start our experiment so we're going to come over and get some cyclohexane this is the cyclohexanol bottle on the warm plate here we are so we are going to be measuring out 10.4 milliliters and we got that from taking our 10 grams and using the density formula and then we did our grams over the density and then we got 10.4 milliliters so because we have a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder we Which will is only 10 ml yes hmm. We will be getting 5 milliliters and then 5.4 milliliters to equal out to 10.4 milliliters of the silohexanol. So I'm going to go ahead and get that now. I like to pour until I get close to the number just to save time. So I'm up to about four. Now I'm going to use my glass pipette to get to my five. So there's the first five. And I'm going to transfer it directly to the pot. Okay. And now I'm gonna get the last number of my 5.4 Turn it so I can see. Yep. And I'm gonna pour until I get to about five. And then I'm gonna get the precise 5.4 with my glass pipette. I'm gonna put my hand back there so I can see a little bit. So it's really hard to see this right now. It looks about five. These are going in twos. Yep. Yeah, basically two small lines. Mm -hmm. So be equal to 0.4. So now I'm going to finally transfer that over. And now we have our 10.4 milliliters, aka 10 grams of silohexanol. So this is will be equal to around 10 gram. Now we have to add 5 milliliters of 85% phosphoric acid into the same round bottom flask. So I'm going to take off the parafilm. I'm going to probably pour until I reach about 4 milliliters. And I'm going to use the glass pipette. Get up to five precisely. Now to ready to set up the reaction. Now that everything is in place, I'm going to add my two boiling stones into the round bottom flask. Next I need to make sure that the joint is greased due to the heating. So we just want to turn it, distribute the grease, and now I'm going to lift it up. We need to adjust the height. Yeah. This one is like weird. This is like the worst one to use. Okay. There it goes. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the heat on. I'm going to put it to around 8. I let the reaction start. And heating start. Okay. 
So now you can see uh, we have set up all our um, glass wares. This is the Hempel column or fraction column without any glass beads. And here we have thermometer. This is thermometer adapter. This is the condenser. And then here we have receiver. We are going to adjust the height of this one. And next is uh, since we have already started the heating. So we have to open this water so that the cold water go here and then hot water will come out. So here we have to be very gentle. Uh, you can see very, very, very small jet should have come out. And then if you notice that in the exhaust, here you can see this is water is coming out. So I will still reduce very slow. This thermometer um, must be the immersion line should be the in the opening of this condenser here this you can see this is the immersion line and here you can see we have how we have connected the uh, whole assembly in the first rod you need one clamp which is holding your column in the second clamp second rod second clamp and this is the condenser then uh, we can to find any o-ring and then you can move your receiver like this to collect your fractions it will take some time now we will wait till the temperature reaches to 100 degrees celsius So this is where we are. It's been 15 minutes. And as you can see, it is boiling, making its way up. The temperature is almost at 100 degrees Celsius. Our saddle hexene is making its way through. The so temperature is reaches almost 100 degrees Celsius, which is nice. Below 100 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. And cyclohexene is condensing. And here we are getting our product. Drop by drop. So this drop is dripping. We're going to keep doing this until it's about 1 to 2 milliliters left in our round bottom flask. Okay. So nice fractional distillation of cyclohexene here we can see this uh, boiling point if we see cyclohexene all have 161 degrees celsius cyclohexene is uh, 83 degrees celsius and we know that uh, we know that water have a boiling point 100 degrees celsius so since this have 85% for phosphoric acid so which have some water so we should not collect the water in this and in this one you can see we can collect if temperature will be below 100 degrees celsius we will collect only product which is cyclohexene and here if you will see this is nicely coming drop by drop is dripping in this cold receiver we are using so that we can collect all the product in this we're now done with the first part fractional distillation so it took us 35 minutes and here we're going to go ahead and switch it off. Heating switched off. We're going to lower it down. Let it cool down. So here, oh uh, yeah, it's all yellow color. So how much we got the, in our receiver? So let's go ahead and look at our product. Very good. So next is the two phase separation from here. Mm -hmm. Great.
so we got how much approximately around 15 ml something or less than 15 ml because total was 15 ml okay now this is the second part of this reaction uh, two phase separation here i have taken 2 ml sodium bicarbonate solution and this is the 10 ml ice cold water so add this solution to your cyclohexene shake it and transfer everything into separatory funnel make sure it is it must be remain closed and then you can rinse your Elmire flask with the water and then close it remove very gently fold like this with the palm and upside down open it release the pressure close it shake it maybe one more time and that's it close your separate funnel gently place it and open the stopper don't forget to open the stopper otherwise two phase will not separate out wait till you can see the two phase so now we will collect the aqueous waste let me show the other side okay collect gently all the lower layer upper layer is your product as you see your water layer is coming down so now this will be your aqueous waste so throw in aqueous waste and clean this Elmire flask and here uh, this is now cool at room temperature so this residual liquid will go into the aqueous organic waste and we need to clean this round bottom flask okay now this is the second part of this reaction uh, two phase separation here i have taken 2 ml sodium bicarbonate solution and this is the 10 ml ice cold water so add this solution to your cyclohexene shake it and transfer everything into separatory funnel make sure it is it must be remain closed and then you can rinse your Elmire flask with the water and then close it remove very gently fold like this with the palm and upside down open it release the pressure close it shake it maybe one more time and that's it close your separate funnel gently place it and open the stopper don't forget to open the stopper otherwise 
two phase will not separate out wait till you can see the two phase so now we will collect the aqueous waste let me show the other side okay collect gently all the lower layer upper layer is your product as you see your water layer is coming down so now this will be your aqueous waste so throw in aqueous waste and clean this elmer flask and here uh, this is now cool at room temperature so this residual liquid will go into the aqueous organic waste and we need to clean this round bottom flask Okay, now it's time to dry your organic layer. So here we have a calcium chloride, which is dehydrating agent. Take a small scoop of this dehydrating agent. This will be enough. And then uh, collect your product inside. So it will absorb all the moisture and now you have to wait for 10 minutes while you can clean all your other glasswares. So we'll come back. So now we're on to our third step which is our simple distillation as you can see from our drawing. So we're going to take it back over here. I have my cleaned round bottom flask. We've cleaned this glassware as well, and we rinsed it with acetone. So these glasswares we rinse with the acetone to remove all the previous phosphoric acid and uh, cyclohexene. So now I'm going to take my water. product. As you can see. This is the dry product, cyclohexene crude trying my hardest not to get any of the calcium chloride. Yeah, make sure don't put a see, calcium chloride. Very good. My two boiling stones. These are the boiling stone. Okay. Now I need to add grease to the glassware. going to lift up my heating mantle if it wants to cooperate with me. Ah, there goes. Okay, this time I'm going to turn the heat to about seven and I'm going to lower my thermometer back down to have, let me find it, the immersion line, as you can see. Now we're ready to start heating. I'm going to turn the heat to about 7. Probably we should uh, readjust this angle rather than it's going tilted outside. Might be a little bit uh, we have to go this way. So we will adjust the arrangement. And we need to start the water. very gently great and here we have in the receiver end our so we'll heat this uh, simple distillation we'll do simple distillation at 80 to 85 degrees celsius to get the pure cyclohexene we'll come back once you will see it started dripping okay so as you can see our product has already began it started it's been about, boiling it's been about five minutes 
So you can see the temperature up here. Uh, around 85. And our product is being collected in the graduated cylinder. Oh, wow. So pure cyclohexene is already dripping. So we have to distill it. Uh, probably we should slow down a little bit heat. Around 6. And we should stop when 2 ml remain. Okay. And here our product is right now you can see over f around it's reaching 5 ml we are almost done in maybe two minutes okay so now our simple distillation is done as you can see it took us about seven minutes to complete the whole thing and now we're going to look at how much product we got. Looking at that, it is about 5.4 milliliters. Mm -hmm. 5.4 ml product, cyclohexene. We got it. Right. Now we will test. So now we're going to do our bromide test. Bromine test on the presence of alkene. I'm gonna get about one milliliter of our product into a test tube. Take it to the fume hood. This is this is the five percent bromine in DCM solution. I'm gonna get a few drops. Highly colored red color. Wow, there is no color. Now you can drop it. So no color means presence of alkene.